In this video, I'm going to show you how to use external microphones with the Panasonic CX350. The CX350 has internal microphones, uh, but for the most time, we'll pick up handling sounds and it's pretty far away from the scene, so I want to use an external microphone with that. Um, this camera has two XLR inputs, so there's one up here in the front um, near the where the microphone mount would normally be, and the second one is back here near the uh, battery port. So they're separate uh, areas depending on which one I want to plug into, depending on what kind of microphones I'm using. Uh, to audio recording on the CX350 is behind this panel. I have a bunch of different switches which I'm going to go over here, as well as the recording levels. Lastly, there's a few things that I need to change in the menu and I'll show you that too. So the first thing we're going to do is change the menu settings from the factory settings for audio recording. So we have two inputs on this device. Um, there are three and four in an, buried in um, a digital connection, uh, but for our purposes there are inputs one and two on the microphone. First we're going to go over to the menu and we're going to go down to audio and my input settings are set to mic level 50 dB. We're going to leave that alone. I'm going to exit out of there. Record channel settings. So each one of my channels uh, has the capability of either being auto or manual. So if I want to be in control of the levels, I would obviously switch that to manual. Again, that's in audio, record channel, and then channel one and channel two. So depending on which channel I'm recording to, I want to make sure and record, either have manual control or automatic control for that. Some other items here in the uh, recording menu are a low cut filter, as the microphone also has one of those. Um, there is a limiter, which will help with loud sounds or loud volume uh, sounds if I'm uh, recording in unpredictable situations. And finally, headroom. We're going to leave headroom at, at 20 decibels, um, though it is possible to shorten that up a bit uh, if we want to. But the factory setting is 20, so we're going to leave that alone. Uh, output settings, we don't need to really worry about that. Uh, mostly that's either HDMI or my headphones out. Um, and then any alarm settings, I'm not too concerned about that. So I just want to make sure that my audio is set to manual under record channel settings. If I press and hold the display button, um, I should, and then toggle through, I should get uh, some advanced menus, including a larger um, peak meter that's going to show me my levels for a couple of seconds. Notice that wasn't on screen for very long. Um, but as I press through those, I can hold that for just a second, and I see that my levels are actually looking pretty good here on the microphone on channel two. Now, if I put normal displays on, I see that same volume graph in the bottom corner. So that peak meter is still showing me what is um, an optimal level for my recording. Um, also, I want to make sure that I'm listening on my headphones and that I'm actually what I'm actually hearing and seeing are the same thing. Um, if you're trying to adjust the volume of the headphones uh, up here in the top of the menu pad button, this plus and minus button right there, that will adjust your headphone volume so that you can hear things a little bit better. Lastly, setting the inputs and switches on the side of the camera are the last but most important part here. Um, so for each of the two inputs uh, that were are manually controllable here, uh, for input one, I can decide whether this is a line input, a mic input, or if the third option there all the way down is for 48 volts. So 48 volt means it is 48 volts phantom power. If I'm using a phantom powered microphone like the Audio-Technica 835B or Sennheiser ME66, I would need to have that turned on to get any kind of signal. The secondary switch here for channel one is that I'm recording um, the channel one from either internal microphone, the microphone that's built into the camera, input one, and input two. 
So this is a pretty cool feature on this camera and many other cameras and sound recorders. I can actually select which input I want to record from to each one of the channels. So when I bring in my audio file into Premiere, I'm going to see two tracks of audio and each one of those is a channel. Now the input could be selectable in such a way that I could record the input one to channel two, as I have selected right here, input one is going to channel two. And then finally I make some adjustments for that channel right there. So as it's coming in. Now, if I want to also have a second microphone, um, I would select a different input from that to come from. So in this case, I have a microphone plugged into number one and I want it to go um, or in input number two, and I want it to go to, in to input number one. I know this is very confusing. It's sort of like crossing the wires inside the camera, um, but they would both be recorded separately. So right now I'm recording using a uh, lavalier microphone, and I'm also recording using an AT835B. So I have two different microphones. I can actually switch them up to be different, but I could also switch them up to be the same. So by switching that to input number two, I'm now recording the same microphone um, to both channel two and to channel one. Does that make sense? So channel one is getting audio from input number two and channel two is getting audio from input number two as well. So they're both getting the same thing, but maybe I set them to different levels. I do this a lot on documentary shoots where I don't necessarily know how loud a person is going to be. Um, sometimes if I'm recording something that's very unpredictable and loud in terms of sound, but also has quiet components to it, um, like a sneeze or something like that, I might record at a very loud level or normal level, but then also at a reduced level so that when the loudest part of that sound comes on, it doesn't blow out or over modulate in which case now I have a recording of both the quietest parts and the loudest parts, um, and I could blend those together in post. So it's like getting two recordings in one. If I'm recording with one microphone under two onto two channels, we call that double mono. So I'm recording in double mono uh, right now. Um, neither the ATA35 or Sennheiser ME66 are stereo microphones. They're both mono microphones. Um, but they'll be played, a mono signal in the editing software is played out of both left and right channels. So it's going to play both to the left and right equally, unless of course I do any post-production work on that to change it. If you're not getting any signal, uh, make sure and double check that you have phantom power turned on. If you're using a microphone that requires phantom power, most likely you are. Uh, in the case right now, I'm using a uh, lavalier microphone that does not have phantom power. So I actually have a battery in there and I'm not using phantom power. I will note that some microphones out in the world could be damaged by phantom power, but those are generally specialty microphones used in recording studios that are very fragile, not usually used in film production.